everybody. Welcome back to Downtime Activities, and welcome back to the Curian Empire, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition game with uh, the level cap of 6 and the uh, various um, political machinations of the ancient Roman Empire uh, as a sort of backdrop. Um, when last we left, you guys were uh, journeying a bunch? A bunch? <laughs> we were journeying <laughs> Very... a bunch. I don't think this really throws off the combat very much. Very much? Jesus Christ, I can't words. Um, I should post that to the channel at some point. Because yeah, uh, it makes fun of you. Um, <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, you were traveling amongst the uh, barbarian tribes that are uh, sort of at war with the Kyrian Empire. Uh, trying to discover the fate of your brother, um, who was a centurion fighting in the north, and his legion has been wiped out. And I have started writing my book, My Brother's Probably Dead, Dealing with Theoretical Grief, by Tercius Francis. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not going to be a very long book. <laughs> if you have a family member who's probably dead, you should try and find out if they're actually dead. And if you can't, I guess just accept it? I don't know. Uh, as, so we, so we were uh, going to... <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah. I think. I think yeah. the audio is fine. Alright. Here's hoping. Uh, <laughs> um, so we were going to... You, our guide was going to lead us to one of the barbarian camps. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright. Well then, the shower we be Let's on. march on. Which one is closest? Let's roll a die to find out. That Ooh, one. That one. I hope it's the one I... It is not. Oh. It's the iron fist, isn't it? It's the steel fist. Yes. Yeah, steel fist. Uh, they're going to be the mean ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's going to be the ironic thing because it seems like they're the mean ones. It was probably going to be like the really cool ones. <laughs> be super chill. Yeah, be super chill. Because people who get a nickname like Steel Fist tend to be really chill, dude. <laughs> you know, just laid back, <laughs> party guys. <laughs> Come on, offer him some drugs. <laughs> I mean, they'd probably be all about the mushroom. Uh, anyway. Yeah, if, we, if he can find us a camp, sure. uh, I will just walk boldly towards it. Um, you guys will, it'll take you um, sort of farther west for a few days. Um, you have to cross a pretty large river, um, but he, like, he can take you to a place where it's possible to ford it. Um, by this point, like... It is getting towards winter. Um, you left uh, um, you left Kaeltarn and Lorland before the snows actually fell. Um, you don't think they're all that far from falling here. Um, the water is freezing. Uh, the nights are very cold. Uh, brings me back to home. Scene? Do you, you, you kill yourself? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I definitely it. doesn't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I listen, I don't, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't think just because he's old in dog years doesn't mean you know he's gonna kill. Old himself. and cold. I mean, you might as well <laughs> just end it, man. Just, just end your misery. <laughs> we can do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Tercius is also miserable in the cold, but he's doing okay, I guess. Um, especially because you refuse to—you to, right. refuse to wear more clothing because it would hide your glorious muscles. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> have, to have, to have the rippling tanned guns. Oh. <laughs> 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 Man, I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like man, you're cold. <laughs> Um, Wolf Salt is very strong. <laughs> Little do you know that there, were, there weren't any nipples on the breastplate, but might have become so hard that they've, they've stamped nipples into <laughs> Batman style. <laughs> oh, God. George Clooney nipples. <laughs> George Clooney Batman nipples, absolutely. <laughs> I'm surprised something like that hasn't come up in our in the show. Uh, <laughs> Who was the designer that was like, 
needs nipples. <laughs> the suit needs nipples. Yeah, do you think you think do you think the concept that had nipples from the beginning, or do you think they added those later? Once they cast George Clooney, they were like, let's go full sex appeal. They hundred percent added them later because Adam West Batman character did no, not. No, no, no. I mean for that particular bat suit. Do you think when production oh, started yeah. and they were mocking up the bat suit, do you think they had a version that didn't have the nipples? No, they were like, no, it's no, missing so something. <laughs> We need yeah. something that well, draws it to the chest. Nipples. <laughs> They're not just the big yellow Batman symbol. Of course yes. not. Yeah. Listen, listen. Uh. It was, it was. They, they weren't a choice until George Clooney was cast, and they're like, "We need nipples. We need nipples. <laughs> Everybody Everybody needs nipples. The, the people want nipples. <laughs> and then what, give Robin nipples too. But why not? <laughs> yeah, screw it. Wasn't there a bat woman, like a bat girl? In yeah, that? she didn't have. One. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's <laughs> I mean, that's ironic. Yeah, I yeah. think there's that, no way they could have got. They could have gone away with that. Yeah, censors wouldn't have allowed. Uh, to get the whole point woman of nipples. <laughs> How inappropriate, female nipples. <laughs> those are a terrible thing that should never see the light of day. Man nipples, though. We need more of those. <laughs> more man nipples. Those are fine, I guess, for some reason. <laughs> Western culture, man. Weird stuff. It's, it's weird to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, uh, really sorry, saying. world. Uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, as you were saying, we head, head west. Your guys' your, uh, your guys's guide, um, Vidamar, will um, take you kind of farther up into the mountains. And the place that he takes you to is a like really rather large war camp. Um, it seems to be both like pretty well defended in terms of, like, its placement and its, like, structure, as well as, um, well-watched. You guys see scouts, um, similar again to, uh, as you guys were kind of approaching any of the war camps of the dwarves, you see scouts significantly before you see the war camp. Um, Vidamar makes no attempt to conceal your guys' presence uh, as you're approaching the camp. I feel like that'd be um, a bad idea. Yeah, we don't want to look like we're trying to sneak up. Yep. And he kind of tells you to, like, it's, like, whatever like whatever it is you're, like, here to do, it's best to just, like, be honest, tell them the truth. You know, don't make any threatening moves. <laughs> um, you have a very hard time getting out of this camp alive. If you make an enemy of these people, they're humans too. So I only have five more feet of movement, not ten, like mm. I would with the dwarves. Uh, I feel Pretty like if I was close to the gate with my current uh, uh, number of die and how I can use them, I could I could maybe survive this just running away the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Depends on how good their ranged options are, I guess. Just, let's not find out. I don't out. think... Let's I don't, not find I, out. I think Barbarian's probably not just many ranged options. <clears throat> just of note, especially recently, you've seen that Asim's demeanor is just more casual than it's ever been. Not that it was anything to make note of he before, was always so but, now, <laughs> but now <laughs> it's, can... it's almost... Like uh, you can call me assy. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like nothing truly gets to him right now. <laughs> maybe the weather, maybe you'd see him like bundle up a little bit and when it starts to get really bad. He seems at peace. Yeah, like nothing. Obviously, you've never seen him afraid of anything, but now even the slightest things that would have maybe set him off before just just don't face him at all. <laughs> Interesting. Is he, is he going to be one with the world soon? He's going to the scales. Sounds like he's going to die. <laughs> he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna fade away in his sleep like Yoda. <laughs> yeah. I see him now. Come, come back as a horse ghost later on in the campaign. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. gonna be like, "You guys suck." <laughs> also, also, where's the talking skull through all of <laughs> his bags? <laughs> his <laughs> mom's butt pocket. Yeah. And the philosopher. Well, I. It's up to you if you guys are following, but uh. I am just going to start walking straight towards the camp. I'll, yeah. I'll follow. I'll <laughs> follow. This is the camp of Barrowman Steelfist. You, again, if you don't make an enemy of these people, you probably won't find an enemy here. Appreciate you getting us here and would appreciate you uh, waiting a little bit of time to get us back. I'll wait till tomorrow. 
I will hopefully if see you tomorrow. Then. Sends me word, or I'm not told to leave. I'll give you the day. Easy enough. Good luck. <clears throat> Where are you going Thank to you. We don't need it. Straight path. Walking straight towards it. You are. You, you are not stopped from entering the camp. Um, and it seems to be. Again, sort of similar to the war camps you guys have already encountered, like, um, like as much a village as anything. Like, there are, it's not just warriors here, there are women and children. Um, though, the predominant focus seems to be on defensibility, on, um, uh, like, on, on the warriors that are, that are here. Um, it does seem to be, from what you can tell... As far as war paints and like patterns are concerned, more than one tribe here. Okay. Um, though, like one tribe does seem to be sort of predominant, at least in terms Later. of their like their colors and their war paints and stuff like that. Okay. You only see more of one than than others. What to say? Damn, now I'm here. Uh, I am Raven Crockcroft. <laughs> I am Tuesday's practice. <laughs> I challenge you. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I will say, my name is Tercius Praxis. I seek information from those that defeated the Seventh Legion. I am on the trail of my brother, whom I expect to be dead, but would like to find out, uh, would like to confirm that for myself. I am no friend of Curian's. Roll me a persuasion check. Come on, come on, come on. 22! Nice. You, like, yeah, it's like you're going to be led into the camp either way, but it's like the persuasion check is just, to some degrees, how trustworthy you seem or, like, how much weight your words seem to carry. Um, a couple of the warriors seem to, like, kind of speak quietly with each other. Um, one heads off into the camp and one, like, motions for you to follow. Okay. Let's follow. And he seems to just, he seems to be following the other one who ran into the camp, um, presumably going to the same place. It's just, for some reason, they seem to have sent word ahead. Okay. Hmm. I'll just follow. Okay. Um, the building that you're going to be taken to is one of the few buildings with any stonework at all. It's not dressed stone. Um, it just seems to be... Kind of a stone foundation or a stone. Oh, make it stone. Make it stone. <laughs> make it scary. Make it scary. Make it you, uh, you uh, growing up in a culture that only does dressed stone, uh, your sensibilities are offended. <laughs> um, you call that a cult. Uh, oh, oh, I grew just, up just poor. Fuck up. poor. <laughs> it's um, it's it's cobblestone. I mean, it's covered. It's covered in moss. It's essentially just kind of a foundation and a half wall. Um, it's a longhouse, more or less. Um, Sod roof. It seems quite old, um, at least for stuff that humans build, uh, <laughs> uh, being an elf. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> By human standards, this right. is old, I guess. Um, <laughs> and you are, um, it seems to be, as much as you can tell, kind of the heart of this camp. Um, it definitely seems to be where the most warriors are gathered, as well as just the most people. Um... It's kind of hung with rough banners showing kind of the, the colors and the patterns of that kind of predominant tribe that, that you're kind of able to pick out amongst the warriors here. Um, and this warrior that's guiding you brings all of you sort of straight in um, the front door into, like, it's, it's relatively cold outside. It hasn't snowed yet, but it's, like, getting cold, and it is uncomfortably warm outside. <laughs> it's smoky. It's hazy. The, the smell of wood smoke, um, mead, meat, 
like all of it is like, Read and meet you say. Read and meet you. Salted pork. Is, um, Salted pork. Like, it's almost, like, the air's almost too thick to breathe. Um, it's, uh, and there are quite a few people in here. Um, it doesn't necessarily seem like a party, um, but there's a lot of activity going on. There's a lot of talking. It seems to be just this, like, cultural center um, of this place. Very musky in here. Does smell like lots of us mostly unwashed people. I know unwashed. At least That's... sweaty people. <laughs> Is there, I mean, I'm walking in and waiting to be mm -hmm. uh, talked at to start with. He he kind of stops, this like where it kind of stops the door for a minute. Mm -hmm. He seems to be kind of looking through the crowd. Um, and you're gonna have to wait there for like a minute before he like again kind of motions the three of you to follow and weaves through. Weaves through this crowd, past the big long fire pit in the center of the room, um, and up towards um, a kind of small collection of seats at the far end of the hall, which seem to have a mixture of people, most of them older, um, both men and women, some who seem to be warriors, some who seem. Um, some who, at the very least, aren't dressed like warriors. Um, and as you all um, kind of approach, um, the the man kind of seated at the center stands up. How tall are you? You're pretty tall. Aren't six you? two. Six two. It's hard to tell because it's like it's kind of up a couple of steps. This man is at least your height, if not bigger. Um, Old human, probably in his fifties. Uh, hair and hair, very very long hair and beard, definitely going gray. Um, where um, tattoos on his face and as as much as you can tell, like uh, at least one arm, um, and like kind of a gold like torque mm -hmm. uh, and like a, a um, like a fur cloak, and he, he stands up and kind of raises one hand for silence, which you see from the elbow down is just a metal and wood fist. Um, I see where that name It seems to be from. as much a mace as anything <laughs> uh, that has been attached to the stump of his right arm. Um, and he kind, of, he kind of holds up a hand for silence. Um, the room kind of goes quiet. Um, but there are a lot of people in here. Um, All I'm hearing is like the drums going do, 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 do. and then like the moment the hand goes it's just oh. um and he, he kind of... Oh, she wants. Never mind, he's intimidating, isn't he? Um, are you wearing your helmet? Um, walking in here, like, as it goes quiet, I think I reach, pull the helmet off, and hold it under my arm. Okay. He, um, he, he kind of studies the three of you for a moment, and um, gesturing again with the gesture... Well, gesturing with his left hand, so he's not just shaking his metal fist at everyone. Mm -hmm. Um kind of gestures with his left hand and tells um, his clan to bring seats, mugs, and food for the brother of the Bloody Wolf. The what now? The brother <laughs> of the, the... Hang on, hang on. <laughs> wolf is fucking <laughs> stooped. Like, dumbfounded here. I don't need to roll a crit to know that I'm what? The brother of the bloody bull? What? Um, there's, like, <laughs> Tercius probably drops his helmet. <laughs> it's like, I'm, like, the arms go slack beside him and the helmet it's, hits it's, the cobblestone. It's, it's just before any noise and activity resumes, so it makes such a marvelously <laughs> awkward <laughs> clanging noise as it strikes the stone floor. You didn't tell us your brother was the bloody wolf. I didn't bloody know my brother was the bloody wolf. <laughs> what, the, what the hell is going on? Damn. God damn it, I respect him even more now. <laughs> oh, this is, this he's my hero. <laughs> damn it. This, this is like Will <laughs> What the fuck happened? <laughs> this is like, I probably kind of, like, I'm just dumbfounded for a second and I'm gathering myself. They will, they will bring seats. They will bring food. They will bring drink. I will pick up my helmet. Uh, I probably don't sit, uh, to start, I'm going to say, I... Come again? Apologize, my name is Tercius, it seems like you know, knew my, my 
brother was the bloody wolf? Your brother is Sidoros? Yes, we knew him. I've come here assuming he was amongst the dead of the Seventh Legion. I need uh, whatever you can tell me about the from the time he was a centurion in that army to what you know. Well, sit down, boy. <laughs> I'll take a seat. <laughs> I'm probably younger than him. I'm only 38. I'm, I'm a young elf, yes, so I am are, probably you actually are, still you younger, actually than younger than him. Younger than he was, he was call, years old. He uh -huh. would call you boy no matter what. I, I look like I'm like in my early 20s, probably. <laughs> late teens, early 20s. Uh, but. So, the story that you will hear from Barrowman Steelfish is that after the war in the South, a lot of legions were rotated up here. Um, some, uh, the the war with um, Raha out east had already stabilized into a stalemate. Most of the legions were sent here, including the Seventh Legion under General Julianus Attius. The destruction of the city of Hara did not sit well with your brother. And the destruction of several tribe villages in Viral and Merovania did not sit well with him either. To the point that he abandoned the legion and sold out, not only sold out the entire legion camp, but led an attack of Merovanian troops in the night to slaughter the legion and destroy the camp. Wearing a wolf pelt dipped in blood and assuming this sort of persona as the bloody wolf. These are the Merovanians? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was quite the soldier. And he, more importantly, he was a good tactician. And he knew the Curians very well. He led several other attacks on Curian legions and Curian outposts, quite devastating ones, before he was eventually captured and killed. Well, specifically captured and crucified by General Tiberius Bellus of the 1st and 5th Legions, who is considered sort of the main general of the North. What was that name? Tiberius Bellus. Don't forget to star and You're welcome to write Tiberius Bellend if you want. I think that's <laughs> funny, but his name is Bellus. <laughs> Tiberius Bellend. going to tattoo that on that character sheet right there. <laughs> going to tattoo it in the table. Yeah. Cured, cured my brother. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this anti-Beria. So, um, I mean, he's also happy to tell you just what he knows of the various <coughs> legions in the north. If, if you want. I'd like to um, know. But they've also just been uh, keeping the legend of the Bloody Wolf, uh, wolf alive where they can. Um, it's become popular with Merovanians to leave Bloody Wolf pelts. Uh, at outposts or camps on the dawn battlefields, um, which you guys have seen uh, previously. Um, his career with the Merovanians was short, but the um, attacks that he led were substantial. And obviously, destroying the entire 7th Legion was... Um, was enough of a blow that it made most of the other legions in the area bottle up somewhat. Um, um, you know, become much more defensively fortify their positions. Um, there have been fewer battles between um, the barbarian tribes and the um, Curians since he destroyed the Seventh Legion because it was such a resounding defeat. Damn. Processing a lot. Mm -hmm. Goddamn. Mm -hmm. 
Did I actually manage to blindside you with that? You I did. Was really, I was really worried you would you would see. I that did coming. not catch that. I did not see that one coming at all. I didn't either. I was like, <laughs> that's a sweet twist. If my brother's gonna be dead, I want him to. Well, I crossed out dead question mark on this over here and wrote big damn badass above it instead. <laughs> big damn badass. Um, as far as the various legions go, obviously the seventh is uh, no more. out of the fight. The yeah. first and fifth legions are under Tiberius Bellus. The fourteenth legion is under General Cassius Antius Maximinius. Good luck with that one. I'm not going to write that one down. <laughs> the eleventh legion is under a general named Marcus Sorex. Marcus Sorex. Marcus or Marcellus? Marcus. Do I have any knowledge of the line of Roll it? me a history check. Hmm, I'm really... You have advantage if you would like. I would like... Out of spite, I will be using the DM and Brody die. Uh, oh, no. I do have a minus one in history anyway, so... Uh, they're both 15s for a okay. 14. You suspect <coughs> that that is um, probably a brother? Okay. Could be a could be a cousin or like a nephew or something like that. But you suspect it's, it's probably, probably a brother. Family fighting. Family. Um, the ninth and second legions are under General Opsia Apelles, and the third legion is under General Lucius Apidius Proximus. So All of which of, are up north. Yes, there are a lot of legions fighting in the north. We'll also tell you that. Uh, Tiberius Bellus is considered a brilliant tactician and a very skilled soldier. And from what their spy can tell them, has his eyes on the throne. Um, that's helped by the fact that he's credited with capturing and killing the Bloody Wolf. Um, he's both, he's quite popular with his men. He's supposedly quite popular back in Curia. Um, should a civil war pop up, he will be one of the front runners. For the throne. Um, Cassius Fentius Maximinius is a violent brute of a man, not considered a great general, um, but he'd be dangerous in a fight. Uh, general Marcus Sorex is only there because his brother is a provincial governor somewhere. Um, he's considered both an idiot and not very conniving, um, both amongst the generals and apparently uh, amongst his family. Uh, General Opsia Apelles despises everyone else, all of the other generals, um, and is by far the most cautious. Uh, and Lucius Apidius Proximus uh, is a skilled soldier, but his uncle is a provincial governor, which is how he got the position, and he hates the cold and would rather be deployed, like, out east fighting the tabaxi or something. He wishes. Hmm. Which is both useful for the barbarian tribes that none of the generals get along, but it also <clears throat> it also means that they can't expect them expect to defeat them, you know, uh, easily lure them into traps using others or um, it means it's it's not a snake they can cut the head off of. It's many snakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can cut off the head off. Of Luckily, a lot of those snakes are writhing around and trying to bite each other, it would seem. Ah! Like they're at the very least writhing around thinking about biting each other. Mm -hmm. That's why we poke the bear and make one of them bite each other. There's a bear here, too? <laughs> Us. We're the bear. We are the bear. <laughs> no, we're the honey badger. We don't give a shit about those snakes. <laughs> honey badger doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> honey badger don't care. Um, hmm. Well, he seems just quite pleased to have the brother of the Bloody Wolf here. Who could carry out the Bloody Wolf? Ask him how he knew who you were. This is a good question. And my brother and I, I mean, like we were talking about earlier, my brother's just me with a plus two to strength and a plus two to charisma. <laughs> <laughs> and a minus two to intelligence. And a minus two to intelligence. Like, like, Actually, my brother, brother was, was, brother was very smart. Your brother's very smart. Like, my, I am the younger brother and I am the, the lesser brother and like, at least in Tertius's perception in, like, every miserable mark. Like, my brother was a better student. My brother was a better warrior. My brother was a better leader. My brother was a better... Like, he was the big brother that I aspired to be. You're, you're the dead Malior to his hand so well. Exactly. Exactly. You are worse. What a weird a niche him, joke. A picture of him, but worse at every measurable mark. Yes, measure. that is me. I... 
think that if uh, he would, if I thank him for sharing all this information, say it's a lot to take in. I think I need to do something if he will allow us to stay in their camp for a little bit of time. Uh, I'd like to drink and eat with them, but that I, I need to, I think, leave and come back very briefly, maybe gone for a day or two, hopefully. You're all well welcome to stay. And I think... They, like, they don't, they're not expecting, because the winter is coming, they are not expecting really any more battles apart from maybe skirmishes. Like, because it's about to be winter and you don't march an army uh, in, through this type of um, country in the in winter. winter. Um, they might send out light little raiding parties to harass especially supply lines. Uh, make sure the cold is just particularly uncomfortable for the Kyrian legions, but hey. they're not expecting it's one of our specialties. It's one of our specialties. Uh, <laughs> well, except we'll destroy some bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little souvenir every now and then. Um, yeah. But they're not. They they seem to be pretty pretty much in the. We train, we drink, we eat, we train. <laughs> like they're like they they are, they seem to be in a pretty jovial mood because. Winter is about to come. They seem to expect it will be a brutal winter, and they're going to just ride it out because nobody is going to march in that way. So I think Tercius would like to, like, if they can put us up somewhere mm -hmm. for a little bit of time. Uh, I think what Tercius is going to do here. Yeah, I think this is a. I think this is where my mind is gone, and that's what Tercius is going to do. Uh, Tercius is going to go to whatever little shack or tent or whatever we've got. Uh, take off my armor, so I'm down just like the clothing underneath. You're gonna train in the winter. No, I'm not gonna just train in the winter. He's, I'm going, not he's going full Rocky Four. Uh, I'm doing a montage. Uh, You're gonna need a I'm gonna montage. set my shield and armor up like in the corner, press the sword against it, and then armed with my brother's dagger on my back and one of my javelins, uh, I'm gonna go hunt a wolf. Okay. I'm gonna go try and hunt a wolf out in the woods. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's he's, what it is. he's got a he's got a he's got a drinking horn of me. <laughs> <I've seen. laughs> you know, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should, should, should one of us tell the guide he's good to to go? I don't know exactly what our move is from here, but Tercius needs to hunt a wolf. Azim is going to start unpacking a lot of his ritualistic stuff around him knowing that you're about to do some fun training and go on a fun little hunt mm -hmm. he, he's got some some prayers to make and some things he wants to do oh god of death kill him while he's out there <laughs> <laughs> please make it painful <laughs> what's your god yours is anubis yeah yeah <laughs> Please, Anubis, please kill our elf. <laughs> please, Anubis, please kill our elf. I'll stab him. I'll, I'll stab I will stab Wolf, I'll stab myself. <laughs> please, Anubis, please kill our elf. <laughs> Since this is going to direct you, I'm going to use bathroom. Yeah. Why don't you can give me a survival check? That I will. We'll try. And here's where my dice suck, and then uh, a cool moment gets ruined. Yep, yep, that's a three. That's a three. Okay. As long as it takes, I'm going out into the cold and hunting a wolf. Okay. And we'll... You know what, can I say for the sake of this, it's just like, after some time has passed, I'll, I'll sigh and get up and like, track him down to help him hunt, hunt a wolf. It's up to you. Uh, are you... Trying to move about quietly? Are you? I'm more focused on looking for signs of a wolf, and if I okay. feel like I'm on the trail of one, I will try and move quietly at that point. Okay. Uh, also, just give me a perception check. Okay. Ten. Ten. Um. You see no signs of a wolf. You you travel. You had quite a ways out um, into the forest. Um, and kind of up into the mountains, you see no signs of wolf. Um, uh, but as you're sort of like 
like hunting for signs. Your perception check is good enough to see the wolf that is hunting you mm. before it gets a surprise round. <laughs> okay. Um, so you will uh, roll, initiative roll initiative on a wolf. Okay. Because this is an epic six. This isn't just a hand waving no, God, thing no. you wanted to do. I didn't roll great on the initiative. Six. Six? Hopefully well, that's my bad and rolls out of the way. You. Yeah. So, um... It is going to go for a bite. All right. You are not in your armor. I am uh, armor class of 12 right now. So, a 17 will hit you. It hits. I am going to... Uh, as it approaches, though... No, as it... Uh, the reaction when it hits me, I'm going to use my parry. Okay. To, uh, and a maneuver to reduce the damage that I take by... Oh, yeah, good God. Ugh, God, I rolled minimum, though. Uh, by three. By three. So you will take six damage. All right. Uh, and you must make a... Strength saving throw. At least I'm good at these. 15. Yeah, you're fine. <clears throat> it tries to kind of pull you to the ground. It, it sinks its uh, teeth into you, but um, doesn't drag you to the ground. Swing it off to the side. After, uh, uh, after I've gone looking for him, do I just encounter this battle going on? <laughs> he's, you tell pretty quickly that he seems to have gone a long way and moved fast. I'll move as quickly as I... Kind of move somewhat briskly to get to him. Like, yeah. I get what I, you know, it's like, because I had, because as a, as a dwarf, I understand. I am his going reasoning. to attack uh, with the javelin. I'm just going to try and stab with the javelin okay. first, uh, which is 17. Uh, 17 will hit. It'll just be a normal stab with the javelin, which will be for six damage. Okay. And I'm kind of like stabbed, like I stabbed the javelin in and just let go, leaving the javelin kind of stuck in its side, okay. and then reach back and draw out the dagger. And it, it definitely it. seems badly wounded, but okay. it is not now. And that's my turn. Does it, it's another 17 to hit. 17 hits again. I'll do another maneuver to try and parry and reduce uh, that damage. Yeah, it'll be it'll be five before you reduce it. So. Uh, I reduce it all. Got so it, it kind of jumps and bites, and I fling it off of me. Uh, it, it clamps on, but the teeth don't get to really Got break it, skin um, much. But you will still need to make a strict save. Uh, 11. Meets it, beats it. Yes. <laughs> that wasn't a great roll. Luckily, I'm really good at strength saves. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm charging forward and stabbing down with the dagger. Uh, 12. 12 will miss. Okay, stab and miss. Uh, and that's my turn. Well, action search. I stab and miss, and I'm going to swing around and stab okay. again with the dagger. Uh, 13. 13 will hit. I'm going to make this a distracting strike to add some damage to it. And the next ally who swings it will get advantage, but that's irrelevant. It's just for the, the bonus damage. The bonus damage. Uh, that is 7 damage. It goes down. All right. So I kind of glides up, I swing it off, I stab down and miss, and then sweep up and stick the dagger into it, and it goes limp on the dagger. Um, and then you will probably, if you're, like, pretty quickly chasing it, you'll probably arrive to me skinning a wolf, uh, scarred up, um, out in the wild. What time of day is it? <clears throat> um, it's getting towards evening. Okay. Well, I see what you're, uh... You're going for here. Not going to question it. So just, <laughs> just gonna, just gonna be like, it's all this, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I felt the need to do this. I could have something else with this fight, but that would have been much riskier. So it's probably mm -hmm. good thing. Well, had a bear show up? <laughs> That's what I was wondering when you were like, starting to roll, like, roll a perception. I was like, oh, it's because of grizzlies hunting me while I'm looking for a wolf. Yes. That would have been a much harder fight. Yes. <laughs> no. I, I think I know what he's looking at now. Made it a dire Yeah, wolf. it's probably good thing. I think I know exactly what he's looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially he's looking sword, at the bigger one. It's essentially great sword damage. 
and uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I mean, if I was in my armor and stuff, I guess I'm not as buff. I'll uh, go I'm ahead. I'll game. go you ahead said, and just. Uh, there with a knife. Heal, I'll use a healing word on you. Okay. So. That's. But then I could have done that thing, and that would have been neat. But I'll make you lived. You'll get all of your points back. <laughs> nice. Okay, healed up. Sweet. Um, yeah, I'm going to skin and try and get a, uh, a wolf pelt of my own. You may add a wolf pelt to your inventory. <laughs> Alongside your tabaxi pelt that you want. <laughs> it's not tabaxi. It's totally not a tabaxi hide armor. Uh, Guys, what do I have to say? It's not a that's, tabaxi. That's, that's what the merchant told you. He told me. The merchant told you it was not tabaxi. And I, that was back when I was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed kid who trusted everybody. Not this hardened war war criminal. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, then I think start heading back towards... I was going to say, let me know when you're on your way back. I think that we would, after I get the pelt, I'd like to march back. Okay. On survival check. On your way back. Six. Oh, crit fail. <laughs> you have no fucking clue where you are. <laughs> you, you, you like, you came out here and you're like, I know we went that way. You followed up to the mountains. And now that you're here, you're like, let's go back to camp. Back. <laughs> you know where we're at. <laughs> you mostly know. You're, you it's... think... That way. <laughs> you, th- you, th- you think the camp is big enough that you you can probably get to a place where you'll see part of it or hear part of it, but you're not like... I'm not confident. You're not 100% sure of like the exact <laughs> This wasn't how I was expecting to do this, but uh, with a survival check, Asim is going to eventually come out looking for them. <laughs> a survival check is a 20. <laughs> they seem to be working their way back in the right direction. Okay. We just took longer than, much longer than we should have. <laughs> Eventually finding you guys, I'm going to say, when we leave the, the forest line, be careful, because I noticed some things on our way out here, I'm not sure what they are. That ain't fucking ominous. <laughs> what what <laughs> sorts of things? Just things out, uh, things on my peripherals moving very quickly. Didn't seem like there was a lot of them, but... I haven't been able to see exactly what they were. They've been following us for a little bit now. Hmm. Interesting. Well, let's get back to the camp quickly. Yep. Don't you like <clears throat> this one bit? <laughs> um, well, am I good to... If you would like, yeah. Cool. So, standing in, in between this camp that you guys are trying to get back to in this tree line is what looks like just a hulking mass of a person underneath a rope. It looks like they have a bunch of weapons stuck to them, and they're not facing you. It looks like they're just sitting sitting in the middle of this this path. Facing towards the camp? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um... I'm going to use my quick toss maneuver to sketch <laughs> If you want to start this as a battle, absolutely. Uh, if I was in my full armor and had my long sword and shield, maybe. But with, uh, I don't know, if you're a third level, whatever you are, buff with lots of weapons, I don't think I want to try and throw a javelin well, at you. I don't want to try and do anything here. I'm going to just call out and be like, Boy. Huh. Hello there, traveler. They start flexing behind them and see if they notice. <laughs> goes to stand up this is probably the largest humanoid creature that you've seen ever he is massive when he pulls his hood back it's a tabaxi but looks something more like a tiger and uh, color wise I actually pulled these out for a reason between a gray and orange like this okay. as night is beginning to to settle and Asim says this is definitely who I saw and he turns to see you with a bloody wolf pelt points and says are you the legendary bloody wolf (laughs) you have a choice to make here (laughs) yes 
Yeah! Oh, I am! I'm going to say... Congrats, you found me. I am his brother. I've heard tale of the Bloody Wolf's defeat of that legion, and have been trying to track him down. I'm afraid that you are a good bit behind the legion, the legionaries. He has been crucified and killed. In an order that might surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, serious <laughs> moment. Bring it back. Bring it back. And that's why I made the joke earlier. For some reason, the uh, the in an order that might surprise you has just been that just that line has been stuck in my head for like a week. <laughs> uh, in an order that might surprise so I'm glad that's back in our cultural. <laughs> Uh, it's back in rotation with our three jokes. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. He says, well, now knowing that you're related to the legend that we've been searching for for a while. We? Sorry to hear. <laughs> he, hearing you say we, he s- says, oh, yeah, I almost forgot about this. And he looks around. What's your guys' perception check? They're actually... Our passive perceptions? Yeah. 13 for me. It, it li- I, I asked... It literally does not matter because I rolled for this with the highest possible stat boost he could have, and a crit. He, he rolled a 29. Oh, and stuck. And just looks around and says, he's around here somewhere, but my brother and I have been following up on these leads only to come to this as a dead end. And he's like, do you want to show yourself? And you hear nothing. Like, Sometimes he's like that. He's a little more skeptical than I am. That's <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. Right? Yeah. And a scene unfazed says, uh, especially with what's happened lately, and my prayers, and obviously some changes that you've seen amongst me, now that you know the fate of your brother, and the amount of death that's come from this. I think it's time for me to return home and start leading more of a path of what I think I'm supposed to do and guide people into living better lives to better deaths as opposed to just killing people. Especially now that I can see in the dark, I don't need help getting around. <laughs> I could travel all night. I'll get back in half the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll say, well, this is a lot to. D- a scene. Might be a scene. I appreciate you traveling with me as long as you have, uh, helping many different peoples against the Curians, and uh, helping me personally. Uh, find the end result of my brother's uh, legacy and with helping Wolf reunite and free his homeland um, we would we can cer- I certainly can understand uh, being tired of this death I think this is so- traveling with you is what I've needed to do but I think Anubis is telling me to do something a little more noble now. And with all the experience that I have and perspective that I've gained on a lot of things, I think traveling home is going to be the best thing for me right now. I plan to travel around, but I think I need to get back. And you... (laughs) Turn This uh, tiger... uh, Why is it you are seeking my brother? My family and I are well-known... What what would be a good... Collectors isn't really the word, but... Probably not even necessarily well-known. Actually, yeah, not even well-known. My family and I... Collectors is fine. There, there's kind of multiple words I could use, but I don't want to necessarily yeah. give anything away. So. That's fair. Are collectors of legends and myths and 
protectors of ancient stories like that. We... Oh god, he's a bard, isn't he? <laughs> Once we heard that a legend like this was actually true, we decided to set out and see if we could track it down. Uh, I personally wanted to meet this legend myself to say I can verify who it is and follow in their footsteps. My brother is just entertaining me. This guy's kind of crazy. crazy, right? This guy's kind of crazy. 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 We're kind of giving him a look like he's got. We already had one guy talking to a shadow. Now yeah. I got a guy showing up here yeah. who's got an invisible bug. Oh, actually, uh, uh, after after his yeah the new guy's speech, uh, I'll walk up to a seam and I'll hand him all the copper I've stolen from the eyes of people in the dead body. A seam is gonna be super rich now. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> be, be like, for the bodies. <laughs> You're gonna have to go find all of them. <laughs> Put it back. Oh, no, man. not even for all of them, it's just for future ones. <laughs> Put my uh, donation. I've lost nothing, because I collected all of these. <laughs> well, Traveler, I can, t- I can tell you who the, the Blood Wolf was before he was the Blood Wolf. I can direct you towards... Somebody in here who can tell you more of who he was after that fact. Uh, I think my wife just died. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. (laughs) Damn. It was was fun. It was a powerful sneeze. In all of your heads, you hear, tell the story aloud for the world to hear. Just in all your heads. In both of our heads? Everyone. Oh. And... And he's like, yep, there he is. Oh, I get it. Your brother's a ghost. Oh, I get it. That's another shadow man. (laughs) Is your brother a god? No. Do you worship a god? He thinks he is, but he's not. He's just really, really good at what he does. Is he a rogue? (laughs) Yes, he is. Not only that, he's a specialized rogue. Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. Um... Tell, tell the story. Right. Yeah, tell, tell the story of your brother. Uh, can, can we not do this here? <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of brevity, I mean, what, the stories Tercius would like. Tercius is feeling very uh, in his feels right now, so he probably does just go into sharing the story of his brother, which is the story of like two brothers growing up. One, the bigger brother being the constant, like both like uh, hero you look up to, and the one who's like giving you noogies and stuff. Yeah, um, <laughs> but. Just like his brother always seemed to excel at everything, uh, when the time came for, uh, when he was what they would deem a man, he was quickly taken into a role as, uh, into the Legion and quickly rose to the rank of Centurion, uh, and has traveled with the Legions since then. But most of the story he says of his brother would be the story of, a big brother from the eyes of a little brother who's constantly looking up to the, like, accomplishments and, like, always trying to, to do what he did and try and uh, reach that same level. Hmm. And then share what I've learned of his time as the Bloody Wolf and that, like, it was... that he was a, a centurion who became a leader of the oppressed peoples and conquered his own legion. Uh this character is going to say sounds like the story of a true hero, a true legend and then right by you guys, another creature, relatively close but, you know, smaller smaller. How much smaller? Because I'm four foot two. Oh, (laughs) Is he he still? They are both hulking masses of tiger-like creatures. Okay. This one is all black fur and says yeah, and says and the story of a good brother. <laughs> and, yeah, he's... He's crazy. Yeah. Big ass, big, 
hulking masses of things, because I, I wanted these all to be strength-based creatures, <laughs> and uh, says, uh, I'm sorry to hear that you're the way your brother passed, but noble and true legend in every way. That's a story to be written. What is it exactly that you two do with these <laughs> stories? It's too hard to explain, but one thing I can tell you is these stories will be passed down for generations to come. Storytellers. Archivists. And at least I'll put it down to writing. may not do it justice in your eyes, but the world will forever know of the true legend. Desire to be Greek demigod rising. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I have some other stories I could tell you <laughs> of exploits of the of the little brother of the bloody wolf and of wolf. <laughs> uh, of wolf. And he is not as bloody. Sometimes he's bloody. <laughs> I'm sometimes bloody, but I'm not the bloody wolf. He'll. <laughs> the, the orange one will eventually, after all this, stand up and say, "My name is Axe." And reach a giant hand out. X, Tertius Praxis. Nice to meet you. Strength checks from both of you. Uh, athletics. 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 You're probably buffer than me. I'm not hyper buff. I'm just buff. Ooh, but that's a decent roll. You Nineteen. Athletics. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five. Respectable. <laughs> Respectable. <laughs> muscles. Respectable. It's, it's, muscles. It's, it's really got the predator. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you son, son of a bitch. Yeah, Dylan, you son of a bitch. Ax, you good. son of a bitch. What's the matter? Bard's got you pushing too many stories. <laughs> um, it's, 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 it's got real... Uh, it's, it's really got... Da, 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 da. <laughs> this is two giant and arms. Ax says, I'm very impressed with you. Oh, well, well, actually, like, reaches down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll reach up. Hmm. Are you going to make me do it? <laughs> Please don't make I'll me I'll make you try to impress him. No. Because <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> uh, axe. Uh, wolf. Nice to meet you. And because I'm sure he's just going to disappear before I even finish this, that's Dagger. Wherever axe he's Axe and Dagger. A winning combo. I need to find friends who don't name themselves after things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's part of my culture, you asshole. That's <laughs> yeah, a cultural thing, come on. <laughs> your culture's great. I love your culture. They eat mushrooms, get naked, and kill curians. Like, I, I, that's, that's the culture I can get behind. The naming conventions are just weird to me. He says, knowing that you're related to this legend, can I train with you? Can I... Are you my adoring fan? <laughs> yeah, I'll put it like that. Uh, Lee, we need to go to the top of a mountain. I want to try something. <laughs> Fetch my bow and arrow. <laughs> Don't hit points. <laughs> Come here, Rex. Um, if you want to spar, you let me know. Let me I really want to see these two spar. I mean, if you would like to train... I have, I have trained with... Well, I have... I have learned lessons from retired Curians in deserts of the south and from frothing, naked, uh, dwarven barbarians of the north. Uh, I would be happy to teach you some of what I've learned from everything from there and in between. And if you're looking for stories, well, we've told a couple already and I think we'll have more to tell before our time's done. I would appreciate that. Well, both. Story and uh, training. Really developing who, who I am, who I, who I want to be. And uh, he's just going to look in the direction he thinks Dagger is and say, what are you doing then? And in all your heads, he's like, he says, I'm off on my own adventure. I he's off on an adventure. He's running away down the road. Already. Are we all crazy? Nah, I, he was here, right? Yeah, he was here. He was here. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, this way, is a lot to take in. <laughs> for context, he's a soul knight rogue. Uh, 
That makes sense. Mm-hmm. All the telekinetic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, axe, dagger, dagger? Mm-hmm. Wolf? <laughs> He's one of my brothers. I have several. Well, axe, wolf, I think we're going back to the camp. I don't want to leave my armor behind at the very least. Uh, Asim, are you wanting to travel with us back towards the coast? Are you taking your own path? I don't really see a need to stay right now. And as far as I'm aware, there's nothing really holding me here. So I think I'm going to travel back on my own. You have to go your own way. He's got my own. Not all who wander are lost. I also need to get out of here before the snow hits the ground. (laughs) And the the longer I wait, the more likely I have to deal with that. (laughs) Then may the gods... Be they yours, mine, or whatever's in between, guide your steps and guide them quickly. Well, technically what would be in between would be the Tabaxi gods, I suppose. Unless you're drawing a straight line, in which case there isn't really anything. Well, I'm not talking in terms of a geographical location, more of um, both looks, attitude, uh, <laughs> emotional states. You're, you know. you're, you're attempting to find a middle ground between the... Anubis... The I'm trying to find a middle ground between Anubis and Hades? <laughs> Slash Cerberus? <laughs> I have effectively made this simple now. We can focus on whatever the fuck oh, your guys' gods are. Well, that won't stop me. That won't stop me. <laughs> I told either. you, I'm working on my thesis. I'm, uh... He's, oh, no. He's <laughs> learned of the existence of the Egyptian gods, and therefore... They're included in this whole theological debate. And, so, and he's also learned of the existence of dwarven gods. <laughs> and unfortunately, they are now in this. <laughs> I already knew that the Curian gods were just cheap ripoffs of the uh, <laughs> Iron ones. So, b- before a scene heads off on its path, um, for, for the sake of I don't know what I have that's relevant to the rest of the story, uh, trade off stuff and say, uh, I, I leave you with uh, El Pidius. Uh, <laughs> well, that's all. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think that he should. No, actually, El Pidius, you like stories, yes? Yes. <laughs> I will hand it to <laughs> and be like, one, one storyteller to another. Excellent, sir. Where are you from? <laughs> We'll come back to you. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said no time to think. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back. To he, the has eternity. Eternity. he has eternity. He has eternity. Thought you were going to get rid and of goes, the skull. And he goes back to his deep <laughs> contemplation of uh, heavenly spheres, the gods, <laughs> truth, uh, justice. Um, um, what is way, right? What is not wrong. super relevant? But he is axe is still roped up, and that you can tell. Yeah, a bunch of weapons and shit on it, but. Obviously, he's a bunch of random shit hanging off his hip. Um, it's relevant in a little bit, but um, message tone. A seem keep in case they need a contact or hand it off. Uh, would Azim be willing to give up his message tone? I think I would prefer a seem keeps it so that we could reach, reach out, out to him at some point. That way you can, you can text when, your when, messages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when we have the big epic conflict and we're like, Azim, we need your magic. <laughs> we're right. be like, I'll be there in... I'll be there in two months. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. I can walk there. Two weeks. <laughs> Give or take. I assume. Totally just T T L Y J U S murdered the emperor. Law. <laughs> <laughs> Knife emoji. <laughs> uh, smiley face with crossed out eyes emoji. <laughs> Thumbs up emoji. <laughs> Gif of that one kid going, yeah, the hockey game. (laughs) (laughs) Disaster kid picture, but under over the house it says, This is Curian Empire. (laughs) (laughs) Asim, Julius, now emperor, stole stole Curian from under us. (laughs) What have we done? (laughs) No longer on latrine duty. He, he does say um, he'll hold on to that message tone in case you do need him for anything. Um, he is going to hand off his med kit to you. That, uh, I don't need one. I've got one. Yeah, he's just going to say, I'm not going to need this. Well, I'm not going to need it. I have. I don't, I don't have room in my pack for another. Mm. And I, I have healing spells, so... <laughs> uh, the only other thing relevant is the... Anubis treasure sc- scrolls. You guys think you'll need? No, that's you. That's yeah, that's it. That's that totally you. goes with you. You, yeah. nobody else could get any use of them <laughs> because they are none. Of, as far as I'm aware, none of them are priests of Anubis. 
I am not pet. I am not yet. <laughs> Just wait. Um, Check my magic item. Yeah, after pawning off Elpidius. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and now, yeah, and now with X. X. <laughs> yeah. he, he bids you adieu and uh, gives all of you a handshake, and as well as the shadow waves from all of you. Bye, shadow. Bye. And, uh, yeah, he asks, do you want me to tell the guide he can leave? Or That's the next question. And I guess this question is to you as well if you're traveling with us, Axe. Axe, right? I want to make sure I remember the right <laughs> weapon. Just like the weapon. Uh-huh. Um, you're that knife. Kill the man. <laughs> <laughs> with... With with happiness, sir, pulls out tridents. <laughs> you you were there, Warhammer. Beat him to death. Why do they call him knife? If he stabs him with a spear. <laughs> it's really a trident, but uh, it's just a knife. No, wait, it's culture. The, Don't be uh, insensitive. Ba- the tabaxi names actually come from tabaxi lore. Uh, that's why the three tabaxi that they've met in the campaign I'm running right now are named Mirage, Aurora, and Smoke. I have a tabaxi like swordsman rogue character I want to play at some point that will probably be like Blue Sails at Dawn, so he'll either be Dawn or Blue, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, I like that. do we keep that the guide or do we tell him he's good? Well, here's our question is. Where does our story go next? I... I don't know if we're quite prepared for it, but part of me wants to stay up north here and cause Curia some more trouble uh, on this war front. Um, I mean, to be fair, were we prepared for any of the other war fronts? We stumbled into victory there. Yeah, we we could do that here. So many questions. (laughs) So many questions. I'm okay with staying here. I think that uh, it's a complex geopolitical quagmire that we could try and take advantage of to help continue to destabilize Curia. We, uh, we turn all the snakes on each other. This camp is who exactly? Steel Fist. How welcoming are they of Tabaxi and like monstrous looking Tabaxi? They are. They're, they're not. They're not going it. to kill if you. If you're right a away. friend of the brother of the bloody wolf, uh, they'll probably give you a horn of mead and some meat and a tent to sleep in. Yeah. Oh, that that sounds welcoming. Just <clears throat> just don't go pissing them off. Yeah. If you do piss them off, then I, I will. We will. We just met you. We will just act <laughs> like we don't know. Don't. Worry. <laughs> you don't need to worry about me pissing them off as long as they don't piss me off. Sure. I don't know what class you are now, but <laughs> at the same time, don't piss them off. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. You may be strong, but strength in numbers is always going to win out. Eventually. Eventually. True. Granted, we've broken that rule a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> more than once. Well, I mean, it's, it's more, more of surviving long enough guide. until the numbers balance back out. It's really more of a general guideline of combat. That's true. An actual That's true. rule. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first of which is obviously don't get involved in land war in Asia. <laughs> but only slightly less well known is this. <laughs> Numbers win the day. Yes. Uh, yeah. Alright. Is yes. that what we think? Like, yeah. do we want to try and destabilize the northern front against... Uh, listen, listen. How many legions are up here? Eight? Seven? Uh, let's see. Listen, I'm just saying, if we turn them on each other, this would be great. Uh, there are currently seven legions in the north. Not um, counting all the... All of which... Are, should be close to full strength, about 5,000 men apiece. Um, let's, let's start causing some doubt. You are, you are, like, and it's also worth mentioning that um, you cannot expect really much aid from the barbarians here because winter is coming and everybody is digging in for what is expected to be a brutal winter. That's true. Do we really want to be up here for a brutal winter? I'm used so to you it. guys can fill four or five months of downtime activities, uh, if you would like. I said the thing. Hey! 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 Uh, or you can... 
You're welcome to. You you are welcome to stay up here and get into trouble because I know you will find trouble to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is worth mentioning that like winter is coming and we'd be we'd be stuck up here doing downtime activities, activities. for some time. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, while that is on brand, it's also a little boring. <laughs> 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 Damn, why you gotta roast our channel? <laughs> <laughs> we think we're funny. <laughs> 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 no one hates us like Well, I mean, I mean what else, again, what else is there? The, hag, the hag and ball, bag of ball bearings ship. It was pretty. Was I think most people would have that. Most indie players would have that. How about we, go find a, how about we just go find a hag? Just go, I don't go, want to find a hag. Go, go, go bully a hag. No one, no one plans to die by the hands of a hag. I mean, well, you could take over some of Erickson's campaign. You should really plan. <laughs> you should plan to at that. least face a hag. God, I love hags. Um, <laughs> yeah, you pick all the fun, terrible ones. <laughs> There's no, not a no, single no, one that isn't fun and terrible. That's why I love hags. It's part of the. It's part of the reason that for a future campaign, I broadened out the list of hags. He had a new That's fun it. and terrible hags. Yeah. Oh, so good. one of them in particular, I really hate. It's like, sure I, like, you really hate it. And that's yeah. good. Good. Yeah. The DM hates it. He's gonna run it in yeah. the worst oh, way yeah. for us. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's gonna. Sh- I hate it so much. It is going. Back <laughs> nice. so um, well, what what else was there? There was. We have some like we're at an impasse in our story here, in that like. We've kind of tracked down a lot of our backstory closure stuff. Yeah. In an out of character sense here. Um, Tertius's end goals it's, it's hard to know between freeing Ayara and watching uh, Curia burn I'm not sure where he's at on that scale uh, I'm not sure if he's quite ready to do either yet <laughs> um, we could return to Ayara and try and rally the people but it's been a long time since the Ayarans were uh, a rebellious force I'm down to go try and rally a people. Listen, we we had to go rally a bunch of other people not too long ago. There's only, sure there's not it. as many like there's if Ayara rose up, there's not legions upon legions there to defend it. Okay. Assume there's like a legion in Ayara? Yeah, and I mean there's lots of provincial soldiers and provincial mm-hmm. guards and stuff like that. There may not be a standing legion there because it's not really considered frontier. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's got to be an underground. There's got to be an underground mm-hmm. rebellion. And I are that we that we can find. Give me a history check. Would I have advantage on this? Coming from there? Sure. Nice. It will make a difference. Thirteen. I mean there's always occasional rumors of dissent. You know very well that there's a uh, elven cult trying to resurrect their sleeping dragon god to burn Curia to the ground. It's kind of their whole plan. Do we help? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, that, I feel like you guys have you guys killed have killed someone. some of them before, but it's one of those situations where you left no survivors, so they have no way of knowing it was you. I could show up in one of their robes. I still have one in my inventory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, it it is relevant in saying a scene had robes from everybody we killed. So, um, I don't know. I've got centurion armor and uh, dragon cult robes. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna stand out either way. So it's just yeah. like, uh, I don't. I, I mean, I'm cold. either up for yeah. causing a rebellion in Ayara, starting one, getting it, getting groups, or we raise hell here and destroy some of the legions. That way, when we do raise hell in Ayara, we have less to draw. Have less to... The problem is, like, we won't really be able to. It'll be the three of us raising hell here. Like, we won't have, we won't be working with the tribes at least not for some time. Yeah. Right. Um, the one other thing that you guys have heard on essentially two fronts now is that there is a general in the east with their eyes on the throne that's true and there is a general here with their eyes on the throne i mean we could help one of them yes but which one which which one not the one here the one that's here is the one that killed my brother that is true this is true i will there's oh you know he's on he's on a very specific corner of my uh of my character sheet and it's the same one with marcellus Uh, (laughs) if that tells you anything yes uh so do we go back east because was was he in the tabaxi territory that yeah uh, it would be out on like that border yeah maybe we can reach out to jalal for information we could go back east 
talk to Jalal, get some... See if we can find out more about that person and help their bid for the throne? Maybe maybe the Battle of Helm's Deep finally happens? <laughs> and, and of course, as well, I mean, you could always go, you could always go talk to the Oracle if you would like uh, and get some story guidance. Um, but she also guided you towards, should you want to begin building a rebellion, um, pointed you towards a safe hideaway. That's as true. It were. We do have the. I want to. I want to make sure you guys are kind of aware understand of, of our many fraud. of your very yeah. options and the places you've been and the stuff. So, so we have the safe hideaway time. for the start of the rebellion. The two fronts of generals wanting to take the throne, neither of which are Julius. Uh, <laughs> Just gonna make that statement. He is still now. scrubbing turlets right now. He, he's still scrubbing turlets. Uh, <laughs> I mean. I don't know any. We, like we don't really know much about this other general apart from the fact that they are wanting to kind of vie for the throne. Yeah. Um, How much information did we get about the safe house? I don't remember. Well, we went well, there. You guys, yeah, you guys it's that like hidden like, away old uh, village. Right, right. um, the ruins of the fortress. My opinion, uh, as a uh, former nobility of Ayara, would like to reunite Ayara and reconquer in the name of the people. Uh, but for that, like that'd be. I think my preference would be to try and get involved with an IR in rebellion and kind of try and uh, lead them towards that place, grow it, and then try and uh, stir trouble in IR and try and reunite IR uh, under its own control. Another option that, you, that you're not considering, get yourselves arrested, kickstart the gladiator arc, and then rise up like Spartacus. Look. Worked out great for him. <laughs> you don't intentionally do the gladiator arc. You go to do the rebellion arc, fail, and start the gladiator arc. <laughs> I see that as an absolute win. It's a win-win situation. <laughs> I'm for up for whatever at this point. Like, I think I think we have our options here. Um, and we are uh, we are at a good spot to stop the episode. So mm -hmm. you can we can you guys can make a decision, and then we can stop it there, or we can stop the episode, and you guys can have some time to kind of maybe we can stop here, and we'll uh, decide. We'll decide probably immediately after this episode is done, and then uh, do it next time. <laughs> do it. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> now we don't have to because we might blabber on for a while and might make the episode long, <laughs> which is what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not it's not too bad right now. It's not like a two-hour-long party episode that we, I had for Skycade. <laughs> it was a great party. It was a fantastic it was a party. party. Nobody died. That was nice. There was no fights. That Wait, was, no was one nice. died at a party? I know. E exactly, yeah. And there was what? no fights. Like, that was more what? insane. I what? believe the end Matt part... G I'm... was in a skimpy gib suit. <laughs> I, I didn't want to know that. It wasn't necessarily... <laughs> because I don't know you what know. his character looks like, it immediately goes to Matty G. A uh, human fry cook. Is what his character looks like—a human male fry, fry cook. cook. That's okay. how he keeps describing his. He's got big fry cook energy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's SpongeBob, and he basically wore nothing. So, <laughs> nope, that doesn't help. Band with that. Band with Before that. Before we continue to wander off. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll give you guys some time to decide. I really like these moments in this <laughs> campaign in particular, where you guys either ha have gained bits and pieces of information, or come to the end of an arc and kind of. The world is kind of open to you, and like you have distant end goals in sight, it's how you want to go about doing them. <laughs> we can also look uh, back and see where everything went wrong at these ports in the road. <laughs> yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. These are very much the. I knew I should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Albuquerque. Kind of moments. I knew um, I should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> Albuquerque. It's stuck in my head. It's one of those things that I will. <laughs> should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. It's stuck in my head for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are of that generation. Yep. yep. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see where you guys go next. Uh, an old friend has uh, gone on their way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, In our time of peace. <laughs> In our time of peace. <laughs> um, so and uh, you, you have gained a new friend. Mm -hmm. um, that you know of. And his weird brother. <laughs> well, I'm still not convinced exists. His <laughs> weird brother. You met him. Uh, you literally met him. Briefly. Mm, we could have all shared hallucinations. His new brother has wandered Trauma back bonding. off to whatever. He's doing, the, Sky he's doing the Skyrim NPC <laughs> run right now. <laughs> um, and uh, you, yeah, you guys are once again kind of at a crossroads. I'm, uh, I'm quite glad that the uh, Bloody Wolf uh, 
that blindsided me 100%. Uh, um, twist landed. I was really worried you would have seen that coming. Um, so, again, just thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.